What's up guys, it's Cody here, and today in this video I'm going to be going over some of the new tweaks that have been released recently. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first tweak I want to talk about is called Confidential and Proprietary. So what this tweak does is add some text to your lock screen that you would see normally on devices at an actual Apple store. So at the very bottom of the lock screen you can see Confidential and Proprietary, call 1-800-MY-APPLE. So you can add that right there and you can even customize it. So if we go into our settings here and we go into the settings panel, you can see that you can tap right here and then you can type in whatever you want to. So if we wanted to change it to my iPhone and we'll just go back right there and go back to our lock screen, boom, changes it to my iPhone. Next is a tweak called Dock and Switcher. So when you install this tweak, it actually installs Floating Dock as well. So you can see the dock right down here. It looks a little bit different. And I've actually covered this tweak before, but it's just like the iPad dock if you have an iPad. It has the recent applications right down here in the bottom right-hand corner. You can see a little line right there uh, separating the dock from the recent apps. But once you install this, but once you install Dock and Switcher, it's going to install that tweak and then allow you to have your dock right inside your switcher. So your switcher never actually goes away right there. So you have access to it and it works right there in the switcher. So it's a pretty nice little tweak. Next, let's talk about no thumbnail. Now this is a really small tweak, but it is one that could possibly avoid some awkward situations in the future. So what it does is get rid of the thumbnail in your camera app. So you don't have a thumbnail right down there. And usually it would have just your most recent picture. So if you want to actually open up your photos uh, from this screen, you can still do so. You just tap down here and it's going to open up uh, the, your most recent photo and then you'll have access to all your photos just by tapping. Next is called Size Finder. What this does is when you put your device into wiggle mode, instead of giving you the X's on your applications, it's actually going to give you the size of that application. So if we put our device into wiggle mode here, you can see three megabytes, eight megabytes, 37 megabytes. Let's look for something a little bit bigger. YouTube is 129 megabytes. You can see Gmail there is 142 megabytes. Now, of course, this isn't going to get rid of the functionality of deleting applications. So you can still just tap on the little uh, bubble right there where it has the size of the app and tap delete and it's going to delete it. So it just gives you a little bit extra functionality. Now, if you use Siri a lot, then you're really going to like this next week. It's called Small Siri. So normally when you activate Siri, it takes up the entire screen and you can't do anything on your phone other than what you're doing with Siri. With small Siri, it just basically gives you a banner notification right up here at the top, has a nice little wavelength, and then you can use Siri that way. So if I go ahead and activate her, open Instagram, and again, open TweetBot. Now, one of the issues with this tweak is that it can't give you any type of text-based feedback. So for instance, what's the weather like? So you can see you can't actually access any of that text-based feedback that she just gave you. You can swipe down, you can swipe up, it doesn't do anything. So to dismiss, you can just swipe up from the bottom just like that. But let's go ahead and try this. For this particular situation, there is a workaround. Read me the weather. It's currently cloudy and 87 degrees in Richardson. So you can just have her read the entire thing to you if you want to do that. But it's definitely a nice and unobtrusive way to use Siri. Next up, let's go to our lock screen and we are going to swipe over. Actually, we're going to swipe up and allow that to fail. And you can see that we have another tweak installed right here called square code. So square code is going to do exactly what you can see right here. It's going to make all those buttons right here square. And you can actually change the radius of this if you want to uh, right there within the settings. So if we go over here, and we scroll down here to square code and open that up. You can see the corner radius right here. So we'll just change it to 50. Actually, we'll just change it to 30 and then respring. And then once it respring's, we should swipe over and they shouldn't be quite as sharp. So let's go ahead and actually, I forgot again. So you can see they're kind of like square circles but just another little tweak to customize your passcode screen. Now you probably noticed my status bar is a different color right here and that's due to a tweak called status tint. So you can actually go into your settings and you can change the color of this. Now the thing about the settings is, is you can't see anything. I don't know why this is, but you can see that everything's white. So you can actually uh, highlight stuff just by tapping and holding on it so you can see what the options are. But really for the most part, all you're doing is enabling it right here 
So you disable it and you enable it. This is the color that your status bar is going to be. So I have it set as red. And this one right here is set for the alternate color. So in some applications, maybe you don't want a red status bar. You can have a different color. So uh, you can see if we just tap on this, it's gonna give you just a color uh, RGB slider. So if we wanted to change this to like a blue color, then we should be able to do that right here. So let's go back. And then once we close out of the app, you can see it's blue now. And again, if it doesn't look good in a particular application, then you can blacklist apps which the color takes place, or you can use the alternate color just by using the settings in that settings panel. Now the next tweak I wanna talk about is called Apple File Conduit 2. Now this is a tweak that's not necessarily very helpful on your phone, but it's something that's pretty nice to have if you like to navigate your device on your computer. Now I've downloaded something called iFunBox, and this is what's going to allow you to, to basically navigate anywhere on your device right here on your Mac. So first I'm gonna install, or I'm just gonna plug in my uh, stock iOS device. So I'll plug this in and I'll show you what you can see here. So you can see everything that popped up over here. You have my phone right here. Now the thing that's gonna be the major difference here is the raw file system. So you have all these folders right here and this is not all of them by any means. And you're just not gonna have complete access to a lot of your stuff because a stock device doesn't have root access and you can't change things like you could on a jailbroken device. Now, once you have your device jailbroken and you install Apple File Conduit 2, this is actually going to completely open up your device so you can navigate everything right here on iFunBox. So if we open this up, you can see there's several more directories right here. We can go into our var and we can go through. So this is basically just like having iFile or having Filesa with the ease of doing it in a nice little GUI rather than doing it on your device or you know going through SSH if you don't know Linux commands. So this is just something that's nice to have if you do a lot of work in Filesa or an application like it. Next we have a tweak called Stylish 11. Now there's a ton of features in this tweak as you can see right here and we can scroll through just a lot that you'll probably want to go through and just look at because there's a lot that you can do here with this tweak. Now this is a free tweak, so you know you can tinker around with it. I don't need to go into complete depth of it, just because if you're interested, then you can download it right now and check it out for yourself. So just to go through a few of these features, you can see you can change the height of the dock by sliding this slider right here. You can adjust the dock's visibility, so basically the opacity of it. You can actually completely hide it too. Uh, you can completely get rid of screenshots if for some reason you accidentally take screenshots a lot. You can skip the screenshot preview, so rather than it putting down in the corner, it's gonna completely get rid of it. Now right here you have add regular highlights and add colorful highlights. Now these are for the icon labels, and I actually don't have any icon labels, so I can't show you that. But if you wanna tinker with those, then you can. Uh, right down here you can tint the spotlight search. You also have a few options for icon text right here. You can remove page dots, you can color the page dots, randomize your lock screen colors. Even coming down here you can make all the uh, Icon square, you can make them circular folders. So let's just do, let's do both of these. So let's go ahead and swipe up here. Actually, we're gonna need to respring our device. So let's go use our trusty little respring tweak that we have installed. All right, now that we're resprung, swipe up here and you can see all the icons are, actually it took away the theme, it seems, but it did make all the icons square. Um, so it doesn't seem like it's going to work with themes, which is kind of interesting. You can see that it changed the circular uh, folder right there as well. The fact that it doesn't use the same theme that you had installed is kind of ridiculous, but it does give you that option to put a different mask on the icons. Now another really small tweak is called Free RAM Underclock X. So it's pretty self-explanatory what this does. This is going to show you all the free RAM that you have in your status bar right under the clock right there. So you can see right now I have 623 megabytes free. Now I say the best tweak for last, we're gonna talk about Call Bar X. Now this is one that a lot of people have been anticipating and this is just a really well done tweak. It is a paid tweak, it's $3.99, but I can guarantee you that it's well worth that money. So if you're not familiar with Call Bar, it's a tweak that's been around for some time, but it was just updated for iOS 11. So just to give you an idea of what this does, let's go ahead and hop into the settings and we're gonna go to Call Bar X right here. And you can see there's quite a few different uh, features and options that you can do. But for right now, let's just set this to uh, what it comes as standard and we'll call ourselves right here. 
So you can see that it pops down right here. Rather than taking up the entire screen, it just gives you a banner notification. It gives you the decline button, the accept button. You have a remind me button, or you can actually just tap right there and then send a message. So if we tap right there, you can see you have your respond with all those canned options, or you can tap on custom. Now right here is the front facing camera. So you can see a preview of what you're showing the, the person that's calling you. Now you can change this up. So we have dark, you have light. So let's give, let's do a call back here. You can see the light one. So pretty much what you would expect. We'll go ahead and cancel that. And we also have two other options here, which is the curved concept X and the flat concept X. So if we go ahead and show you that, you can see the nice little uh, curved animation that you have right here. It just slides the entire card up and then has a nice little UI right down there at the bottom. You have all the same options that you would normally have. So we'll go ahead and cancel that. We'll change it to flat and call back. And you can see that it has just a more of a flat look. All right, so I'm gonna leave it on dark just because that's my favorite one. And we'll come back here. And just going through some of the options here, you can see where the call bar appears from. So you can do top or bottom. So just for just to show you guys, if we go ahead and call, you can actually slide this down to the bottom if you want to, slide it up to the top. It's really fluid, no jittering or anything like that. If you try to swipe to the left or right, it's not gonna work, but you can swipe up and you can still use your phone. So that's pretty cool. So that's really the, the main reason for call bar is that it doesn't take up your entire screen. You can still use your device completely um, and still have like FaceTime calls, which is really cool. So if we go ahead and accept this, you're gonna get some feedback here just because I have two phones going on, but you can tap right here and it's going to give you my other view. So this is my other phone that I'm calling from and you can see it just gives you a little pop-up right here. So we can take a, a picture if we wanted to. We can tap on it again and it puts it back into the actual call bar. Again, we can swipe down here, open that up, tap it to close it. You can also uh, switch the camera view right here. So you have the front facing camera, did not mean to do that, or the back facing camera right there. So let's hop back into the uh, settings here just to show you a few more options that you have. So you have use app specific buttons, you have scroll for long names, a minimal look for incoming calls. You can have this work for FaceTime video, which I highly recommend just because it works so well. You also have use it lock screen. So if we're on our lock screen, you can see it'll pop up just like it normally would if you had your device open. You also have a little toggle right here that allows you to exit the phone app when dialing. So if we wanted to call someone here and we hit call, it's going to close out that phone app right when you hit the call button. Now right down here we have our dialer settings. So this is actually a new portion as well. So you can activate your dialer uh, in a couple of different ways and it's all due with the, the status bar up here. So you can tap on activation methods and you can see a swipe left, a swipe right, or a double tap on the status bar is going to activate the dialer. So if we just double tap on the status bar, you can see the dialer that comes right here and you can use it just like you could the call bar. So you can move it down, you can move it up and then you have all of your buttons right here. So you have your favorites, your recents, your contacts, the dialer itself and the voicemail button. So if you don't want the voicemail button up there, then you can just toggle that off. So just to show you guys, if we tap right here, it does just open up the, the standard dialer. It doesn't have any types of themes or anything. You can notice that it doesn't have the voicemail button down here, but of course, if you need the voicemail button, then you can obviously just access it right there. So we also have a few more options right down here. So basically just vibrating on answer for outgoing and incoming calls, as well as 3D touch expands the native UI. So if you get a FaceTime call or if you get an actual phone call, then you're gonna be able to 3D press on that, on the call bar in order to open up the native UI. So just to show you guys, if we go ahead and get this, or I'm getting a FaceTime call and I wanted to open up the native UI, 3D press on it and it opens up the native UI. So pretty self-explanatory. This is one of those tweaks that if you really like well-written and pretty much bug-free code, then you're gonna like Call Bar X. I highly recommend it. Definitely worth the $3.99 and one of the better tweaks that's out right now. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure you hit that like button. I really appreciate it. Of course, if you guys wanna stay up to date with everything jailbreak, everything Apple and any other tech that I wanna cover, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.